back down, Dan? Dan. I'm thinking it's go time. There's multiple things that can go wrong. It's insanely heavy, it's about 200 pounds in total. You could easily knock out his teeth, hard as break his nose. Tighten that as tight as you can get it. You could start flooding with cold water, so now you're talking hypothermia. Put a braille on, put a nut on to secure it. You could have a malfunction with the compressor that's feeding the air. Go ahead and grab the helmet. You could go unconscious. Let it drop. Once they close the door on that hat, you're like, okay, we're doing this. We're doing it live. Can we get a comms check, please? Loud and clear. My name's Dan Henderson. I am the lead instructor for the scuba module here at the Divers Institute of Technology. The legacy plays a big role. There's a lot of tradition and pride in diving. Guys started diving with just cans on their head and there's a lot of uh, trial and error. A lot of what we teach is because of the mistakes that have been made in the past. Our rules are written in blood. With a vertical rotation and a horizontal drill. All right. We basically pump out underwater construction workers. And max depth. In order to do that, you have to dive with a hard hat. And so it's surface supply diving. I'm Sean Day. I'm an instructor at Divers Institute of Technology. My name is Brandon Travis. I'm in Divers Institute of Technology I'm in Seattle, Washington, class 107-22, just kind of trying to become a commercial diver. It's kind of like a brotherhood. You almost join a little bit, like everyone kind of helps each other out. Nice and easy on that right? The environment, just being able to go down and seeing what's down underwater, having like those complicating problems to be able to solve, just that adventure part of it, just something really cool to be able to go do. My name is Dylan Brigham, and I am a student here at uh, Divers Institute of Technology in class 107-22. The whole course is approximately seven months, give or take. I had no idea that this would be what it would be like. But when you get here and you get grouped with 20 other guys, you know, you really come together as a team. They've got five minutes to get from 40 feet in the water column to 50 feet in the chamber. It's easy to teach safety here because it's so a part of the industry. You know, working underwater, we're not supposed to be there. Watch his teeth. Today was a great day. We dressed one of our instructors in a uh, Mark V diving suit. The Mark V was just the system that was used the most out of everything. It was like tried, true, tested, uh, copper spun helmets. It was just the hard hat, men's type, heavy, heavy equipment type of diving. You know, just kind of carrying on that legacy, you know, because that's, you start looking at the history of diving and the introduction of the Mark V was a very climactic point. Easier nowadays, we have nicer gear, nicer equipment, everything's lighter. When back then, those guys were diving heavy, hard stuff. Like, we were all jealous that Dan got in the hat and it wasn't us, to be honest with you about it. It, it's almost analogous to walking through the woods in the dark when it's foggy. You know, you kind of see shadows sometimes. And whatever creatures are in the ocean, we're in their world. Well, I'm honoring the guys that came before me. I'm experiencing what they experienced subsurface, and it gives me a deeper appreciation for what, I, what we're actually doing down there. Being able to dress him in that equipment and learn about it and be hands-on with all of the equipment, it was surreal. It's a very complicating system, so being able to do everything in unison together is a really important thing. I almost felt weightless like I had purpose. It's very freeing, it feels like you're exploring, it, it, it's addicting. It takes a team. I mean, you really have to be deliberate in your planning and what the job is and what the job requires and how you're going to do it. 